Oh my goodness. The cap is going right in on the upper chest peak. Hopefully uh, 47th Brigade can save the Chesapeake guys. Rambro back with Grand Tactician Civil War. Union Campaign, version 1.07. And we are coming to the end of winter. The first winter of the war it is February 26th, 1862. And it's been a fairly eventful winter. I normally start off an episode with the discussion of what all is going on in the various theaters and what's going on with uh, policies and projects and things like that. I don't really have anything like that to uh, for this episode because time advanced very little and essentially the situation at the beginning of last episode is the same as the situation at the beginning of this one. As a matter of fact, Grant's army is still involved in the battle from two episodes. That's how little time advanced. Uh, <clears throat> so, Mine's still building his supply depot here. Stevens still besieging Fort Hyman here with, uh, seems to be in his favor. Grant's still involved in this battle at Nashville. Kanawha Corps is still about to march down to London and build a supply depot here to threaten the Cumberland Gap uh, in Knoxville. Or to threaten Knoxville via the Cumberland Gap would be a better way to say that. McClellan, true to form, not doing much of nothing. Farragut's frigates still at Baltimore, or Annapolis actually, uh, regaining readiness to come down to have another try at Fort Norfolk. That should all sound quite familiar. <laughs> okay. Oh, and one other thing I want to mention uh, here at the outset. I've, I've fiddled with the names of the armies again. I've changed some of the army names. Actually, I think I've pretty much changed all the army names. And here's the reason why. There are two Army of the Potomacs. One Union, one Rebel. There are two Shenandoah armies. One Union, one Rebel. There are two Tennessee armies. <laughs> and it just got a little tiresome having to differentiate, you know, the Confederate Army of the Shenandoah. So, fine. All right, I'm conceding to the, you know, the AI is not going to change the name of their armies. Right. Not even after they get organization reform. Yeah, this Army of the Potomac, for the Confe it's going to stay there the whole time. So, whatever. So, the, our old Army of the Potomac, I have renamed the Army of the Chesapeake. My Shenandoah army, which admittedly I changed it. It was originally something else. Uh, I've changed that back close to what it was. That is the Army of Pennsylvania, which seems appropriate because of its overwhelming preponderance of Pennsylvania troops. And the Army of the Tennessee, because there's a Confederate Army of Tennessee and an Army of West Tennessee, and at some point, there may even be an Army of East Tennessee. I've just gone ahead and renamed that the Army of the Ohio. <laughs> just so it's a little easier when I'm talking about these armies, which often fight each other. So, you know, it's like our Army of the Potomac versus their Army of the Potomac. Just got a little silly. Okay. So... Interesting situation here at Winchester because of the sequencing of battle initiations over the past few days in game time. McDowell and Thomas were able to isolate Beauregard's Army of the Potomac and fight a battle against it without. the Army of the Potomac being reinforced by the Army of the Shenandoah. They are both shown with swords, you know, in battle icons above their symbols, but they're involved in two different battles. One a win and one a loss. So as soon as all these swords 
clear, the army of the Potomac will be retreating, but the army of the Shenandoah will not, because they are winning their battle. When our sword's clear, what I expect to happen is that our cavalry force, the East Scouting Force, will be retreating, whereas the Army of the Chesapeake and the Army of Pennsylvania will not. So I think what's going to happen is, is as soon as these battles clear up, boom, we're going to have another battle right here. And it'll be our Army of the Chesapeake and Army of Pennsylvania against the Confederate Army of the Shenandoah. Which should be in our favor, but our guys will have just come out of a battle. And so I don't know what their ammo stocks are going to be. We could be in a low ammo situation. That'll be interesting. I don't know if I've had a situation quite like this before. Meanwhile, I'm also thinking Army of the Northwest is kind of hanging out here by themselves. I think I'm interested in getting the Army of the Rappahannock under Winfield Scott across the river and let's push him away. Hopefully before he can be reinforced by the Hampton Division. It, I'm not 100% sure if these two armies are within reinforcement range of one another. Don't know. I don't think so. And the main thing I'm interested in to push the Army of the Northwest away is to regain control of this Tier 2 supply depot. So I'm going to go ahead and order Scott to come across the Potomac and engage the Army of the Northwest. And frankly, I would like for him to do that fairly quickly before the Army of the Northwest can be reinforced. So I'm going to give him both uh, rail movement uh, enabled and I am going to go ahead and tell him to force march. It's a short distance. I don't think attrition will hit him too hard. And with that, let's get time rolling. Mm -hmm. It was going pretty quick. Interesting. Okay, let's... Did I have Scott in defensive mode? I guess I guess I must have. Yeah, I did. Okay. Well, let's see. This is in our favor, but I do not want another army to come reinforce Sidney Johnson. So I think let's go ahead and convert this into a tactical battle now. Uh, we've got a troop advantage, we have an artillery advantage. Uh, let's go ahead and do it. I mean, I, I think this siege would wind up in our favor, but I just don't want to give them a chance to reinforce. There will be two viewer units involved in this battle. We've got the Marines, United States Marine Corps Brigade, and uh, Scott's 1st Division. And we've also got the Upper Chesapeake Battery of Maryland troops. Let's hop in. Okay, we are on the Manassas Junction map, which is completely appropriate for where we are. And despite the fact that we assaulted, we are in a defensive situation. And I have, I have, I have found that that is pretty standard. If you're in a siege situation and you choose assault, it almost always puts you in a defensive situation. So that's another little trick. Should it be that way? Probably not. But that's the way it is. <laughs> okay. 
So here's our deployment zone. There's our objective. Where's Johnny Reb's uh, single entry point? It's down here on the south edge of the map. So he's going to need to cross Bull Run. These Fords from, uh, let's see, Farm Ford, Stonebridge, Lewis Ford, Balls Ford, potentially Island Ford. Right in here is where he's going to, he's got to cross at one of these places. However, from Farm Ford, even just from Farm Ford down to Balls Ford, that, that's a pretty good distance for one core, one army to cover. Yeah, I think I'm going to set up probably with the idea of Lewis and Balls Ford being the most likely places he's going to come. But then also kind of setting up the flank so that we can flex in one direction or the other. So I want to get that set up. Okay, so here's the defensive position. Threw up some, uh, uh, built some parapets here facing the two primary Fords. First division is in this position. Because they've got reinforced parapets, they're a little thin in here. One brigade on this fort, one brigade on this fort. Do have one brigade in reserve, that's the Marines. He can flex to either side, but initially, I'm actually going to have him building. I forgot to actually draw them. Initially, I'm just going to have him building some breastworks for perk slot XP. Want our Marines to have a perk. And I'm going to make it a nice long one so. You know, he takes him. <laughs> he has to do a lot of constructing, and if he actually gets all this done, well, we can put the artillery in it, maybe. But this isn't intended as an extra defensive line. This is just to give the Marines something to do for perk slots. Second division over here, covering Farm, Ford, and Stonebridge. Similar thing. Actually, most of the brigades in this army. This is uh, the Army of the Rappahannock's first combat. And most of these brigades do not have a perk slot open yet. So we're building some breastworks over here. And third division is building some breastworks over here. Even the even Butterfield's experience brigade, which I brought from another command, uh, these guys came from the old Shenandoah army. So they didn't have a perk slot either. Neither does Shank, but Shank needs to be in his pair. No, nope. Shank's good. Shank, Shank has uh, Ace of Spades. So he's where he needs to be. And the Upper Chesapeake battery is in support right here on the parapets uh, next to 45th Brigade. That's our position. This army has no cavalry. And so, uh, can't really go out and scout for the Federals, but I've got skirmishers kind of sprinkled along the edge of the deployment zone as our early warning for the approach of the wily, crafty secessionists. Let's see here. What else do I need to do? And that seems like a decent position for Winfield Scott. Let's go ahead and tuck Buchanan up a little bit closer with his division and same with keys let's put keys right up in here okay that's our position a lot of uh, breastwork building to do rebels got some marching to do okay so this happens occasionally. Had the weird little glitch where in the middle of the deployment zone in the middle of the night, uh, it kind of hung up and I got the supply barrels on all the units, could not clear them. Plus it was midnight. And uh, really the only way to do that 
to correct that is to save and reload, which I did. And I don't think it's hurt anything other than it has kicked us back to 8 o'clock in the morning on day one. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess we got some free extra time there. Let me see. All right, still working on our breastworks and still waiting for Johnny Red to show up. Okay, the Army of the Northwest has uh, arrived within vision of our skirmishers, and they are coming right up through here, which is which was kind of the most expected location. No skirmishing has occurred yet, but they're moving forward, and it looks like Johnson appears to be forming up on an axis kind of like this, which seems rather strange. But... Uh, just going to keep working on my breastworks and uh, wait for Albert Sidney Johnson to make a move. Okay, so it's almost 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the Confederates are gradually moving forward and have pushed uh, a few of our skirmishers in. They're working on this guy right here. Skirmisher here has been driven back. And they're sending several brigades in this direction, still on this side of Bull Run. I'm moving the second division kind of generally over in this direction. And uh, that's kind of where we're at. I did get the supply barrel icon bug again, so I have done a second save and reload. I hope that doesn't occur again during this battle. In addition, I have apparently built two pontoons. <laughs> uh, I didn't order them built, I don't think. Um, I was thinking maybe the Confederates built those. However, I got messages saying, hey, your pontoon is ready. The engineers have successfully assembled a pontoon. Uh, so somehow in the course of doing the breastwork building, it got the idea that <laughs> I bought these pontoons too, which can only help Johnny Rev. Why would I have built those? Anyway, so that happened. Strange things afoot today at Manassas Junction, but I think we're still in fine shape. Just go ahead and uh, let this battle roll. Marine's still back here finishing up this uh, press work. And didn't quite, didn't quite get to a perk slot. It might still be working on it, I don't know. Another thing that happens is whenever you do a reload, if there were any partially constructed breastworks, apparently they don't stick, nor can you, you know, they don't get finished, but they're also no longer eligible to uh, be built. So this is just a skeleton breastwork right here, which nevertheless is giving this artillery full green cover. Okay. Boys are coming across the. Uh, let's get uh, Irwin's 47th Brigade of New York troops right up in here. Okay, I'm going to pull the Upper Chesapeake uh, battery back a little bit because I need for that brigade to be able to uh, rotate. Turn his initiative on. 45th Brigade, Crook. It is an order delay item. It's pretty quick though. There he goes. Well, it looks like he rotated before the courier got to him. Oh no, that's a different courier maybe. I don't know. Or maybe that was the courier supposedly going to the Upper Chesapeake Battery. Confederates over here, too. Oh my goodness. The cab is going right in on the Upper Chesapeake. 
Hopefully, uh, 47th Brigade can save the Chesapeake guys, the Maryland guys there. Okay, cab is wavering. Good. Forty seventh Brigade is in melee. Okay. All right. Whew, that was close. <laughs> Sorry about that. Whoever uh, is the sponsor. However, they took only one loss. They just barely stayed out of the clutches of that calf. Okay, let's get them facing back around. Let's get this brigade facing. And let's get uh, Catterson advanced in front of this artillery. up here. I don't think too many people got a, a perk slot open, but uh, a lot of brigades made progress. They'll get it pretty soon. He was in melee, therefore he went to short range fire. Just halt. I don't want you going that far forward. Forty-seventh is uh, doing what they're supposed to be doing now. Okay, we've got some Confederates who've crossed over here. Hayes, forty-ninth brigade is engaged. over here into these woods. To deliver flanking fire on tombs. This artillery is not really in Good news if somebody got wounded. Hayes wounded. How does that impact his uh, morale? Well, I don't see a modifier. Nor do I see uh, a morale debuff yet for having a wounded commander. I don't know if there is one, to be honest. Clearly, the, uh, these pickets' uh, vision purpose over in this area is no longer needed. Let's just have to come over here and deliver some flanking fire on tombs. Okay, Shinks, Ohio boys are engaged. Someone's trying to cross, Jackson's trying to cross the ford right here. Speak battery over here. Catches is not in cover, but he's not really taking much in the way of casualties either. As Johnston moves in on him, I'm guessing that's got to be a different Johnston from the Army commander. I don't think. Unless that's Joe Johnston and Brigade Command. <laughs>
accent hasn't gotten his orders yet. Oh, those are Napoleons. Not uh, howitzers. Nice. Okay, Jackson has made it across the ford. We've got a pretty short-range firefight going on right here. However, Schenck is in reinforced parapets. Not taken many losses. Okay. Tombs is being driven back. He's wavering. He's taking fire from skirmishers. He's got Butterfield moving up. Nice job, 49th. Chesapeake battery moving now. Where's the Marines? I thought I told them to come over. Yeah, they're still moving. They're moving through woods. It's their first battle. <laughs> I don't think Caddison's even been fired on, has he? He has taken no casualties since the last we looked a few minutes ago. This may be a smoothbore armed uh, brigade here. Feel free to fire. No? There they go. Walton's all hung up in this creek bed down here, and that's why his fatigue is low and why he's lagging behind everybody else. Okay, Chesapeake Battery. unit broke before he got set up. Okay. But they're in a nice position to fire right down through here. May, may might be able to hit Walton from where they are. He's got the unit cut off debuffed right now because he's a little bit too far away from his division commander. So let's move... get all these skirms to come over here and beat up on this arty. Let's move this division commander kind of over this way. Yeah, Upper Chesapeake Battery is uh, firing at Walton, just as they should. Okay, Catterson's in fine shape, however... He's had his fun. Let's just go ahead and pull him back, and let's get the Marines. Let's get the Marines up here. They're okay on fatigue. They're, they're having cohesion problems. And they're a new unit. They're untrained. That's actually true for a lot of these brigades. Okay, we should 
should have a bunch of skirms uh, banging away at this artillery pretty soon. How many guns is there? Ten guns. Mentioned it before, but as a reminder, there is no cab with this army yet. She's just pounding uh, Walton there, who's already got low fatigue. So I think he's going to be wavering pretty soon. So somehow we've lost vision of him. What's up with that? Some skirmishes out here just so we can see. There we go. Okay. Marines are firing. So they're not in the best uh, situation for fatigue and cohesion. However, neither is Walton. So, <laughs> forward you go. Davison doesn't chase them and then get hung up in the river. Okay, nice job, double dogs. Okay. Is there any possibility of these skirmishers catching up to that brigade? Or battalion, rather. Maybe. It's a different battalion. I think this other one broke. There's some there's some guns laying around down here. I thought I saw. Yeah, right here. So I think Clark did break, and I, we just didn't see it. Keep chasing. Come on, guys. All right, we're in the retreat, and I, I don't think we're going to catch anybody. And what are we at here? 2,600 casualties for them, less than 400 for us. 16.5. Uh, uh, there's no units that are going to be fast enough to deal another 6 or 7% casualties. And there's only 12 minutes remaining in the retreat phase anyway. Okay, so the enemy has withdrawn orderly. It's a minor victory. Pretty lopsided uh, casualty count. And yeah, yeah, so they worked on the AI some, but in a position like that, you got the river, the fords, the terrain. I mean, I look at a battle like that and I'm like, well, the AI could have done better there. But then I asked myself, what exactly do I expect the AI to have done better? And it's hard to come up with that answer. I guess we'll have a look. And, uh, it, you know, they weren't engaged for very long, but let's just have a look and see how... I don't know if it's going to let me. I can't 
can't uh, get out of the... There it goes. Well, Upper Chesapeake Battery with its Napoleons did pretty well in their first battle. 189 casualties for one battalion. That's pretty good in this game. And uh, the Marines dealt 61 casualties, which I think they only fired one or at most two volleys right there at the end. But they got a lot of XP from building breastworks toward their first perk slot. So not a bad first combat experience for them either. The casualties are pretty much, uh, as we saw in the battle results, captured a little over 1,200 infantry arms and five artillery. Another 50 guys going into the POW camp. Minor victory, but City Johnson's going to have to retreat away from this supply depot, which was the whole idea. Okay. So, Sidney Johnson will be retreating. Beauregard's Army of the Potomac will be retreating, and that leaves, I'm curious to see what happens when the Army of the Shenandoah and our two armies, the Chesapeake and the Pennsylvania, when they come out of battle. I'm not sure, to be honest. Let's find out. Rolling time. Up here, the Army of the Chesapeake and the Army of Pennsylvania, they were both also reinforcing armies in the first battle that the Army of the Shenandoah won. So it's possible that even though they won the other battle against Beauregard, they might retreat when all this clears up over here. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, the CAV force is retreating, as they should. Yeah, yeah, as, as I expected there. Okay, so we have an engagement between Thomas and this time Jubal Early. Three brigades in the Army of the Chesapeake with low morale, only 448 men. Those are probably artillery units. And two brigades, total of 88 men in the Army of Pennsylvania. Okay, so their morale situation is actually not bad at all. Very few men are actually covered by these low morale icons. So I think Jubal Early is in for a bit of trouble. However, I believe he's going to be in for a bit of trouble in the next episode. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. In the, in the next episode. Okay. So, more fighting in the Shenandoah Valley to follow. If you like what we're doing with the channel, if you like this content, then leave a like. Leave a comment. Maybe even subscribe, if that strikes your fancy. If you're new to the series, to the channel, and would like to see more of the episodes in this series that you may not have caught yet, I'm linking the playlist here. At any rate, thank you very, very much for watching. I appreciate it.